And we welcome you to Reno, Nevada. Joe Tessitore, Rod Gilmore, and David Diaz Infante with you here as Boise State, number four in the country, trying to stay perfect. Start things off with a Kyle Brotsman field goal moments ago. Khalid Wooten now for Nevada. And Wooten now past the 30. Glad you're with us here in Reno. It's been a cold snowfield Thanksgiving week yeah. here, but they're saying this is the biggest game in the history of Nevada football. Obviously, it's been a pressure-filled afternoon of college football, Rod. It really, it's like a playoff day. I mean, we've seen Oregon and Auburn take care of business to stay in the top two spots. And you know Boise State is sitting at number four. And with the win tonight, they will pass TCU and become number three. That keeps them in contention for the BCS championship game and would put them as the front runner for the Rose Bowl if they can beat Nevada tonight. Boise State jumping out front with a fast start. They've scored first now in all 11 games this year. Kaepernick, quick handoff to Virgil Green, and Virgil Green, the long striding tight end, with a good run for a first down for the Wolfpack. Colin Kaepernick, one of these names you've probably heard of. Maybe tonight's the first time you're getting a good glimpse of him. He's six foot six. He's a dual threat star, a real dangerous guy with his legs throughout his career but this year he's improved dramatically with his passing yeah and we saw that on the opening drive as he threw a very nice ball to get them going but he's got a great arm and he's got more touch now by Tawa now and Tawa out to the 47 yard line senior running back the NCAA's active career leader with 24 games over 100 yards rushing and test the challenge for this offense is to get Kaepernick free so he can make big plays. And Boise State is trying to resist that. Boise State does not want Kaepernick on the edge. They want to keep him inside. They want to force Nevada to run the dive play, to run the ball inside. Kaepernick's going to have to find a way to get to the edge, and he's got to throw the football. And to get it quickly out now to Shepard. And Shepard is going to be marked uh, two yards short. Well, if you're just joining us, here's how this game got going. Watch George Iloka, the safety for Boise, a tremendous interception on the sideline. Yeah, Virgil Green could not hang on to this ball. Had a lot of heat on it, and the rebound goes to Iloka. Boise would then take the ball, drive down, and Kyle Brotsman would nail a 33-yard field goal. Nevada had scored on the opening drive in 10 of 11 games this season. Third and a long one. Tawa nowhere to go. Taken down for a loss as Billy Wynn and Aaron Tivis combine to bring him down. Well, the difference in this Boise State team to me is up front. That defensive line. Baker 97 in inside. Winner swipe. Wynn. Those guys have been dominant all season, and they've destroyed teams that have tried to run the ball inside on them. So Brad Langley comes on to punt for Nevada. They've had such a good offense this year. He's been very limited with his punting duties. Chris Potter back deep for the Broncos. And it takes a Nevada bounce inside the 15 yard line. For those of you who have been watching the beginning of this game on ESPN Classic, we invite you now to join us on ESPN as we take a break. Broncos up three zip early. Football Prime Time brought to you by the Capital One Cup. To learn more, go to CapitalOneCup.com and Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. See a sprinkling of orange and blue as many have made the five and a half hour drive down from Boise, Idaho, here to Reno. <laughs> Little sisters of the poor, huh? <laughs> Making reference to a quote from the Ohio State president earlier this week. Well, they tend to do their talking on the field to these Broncos. Play action now. Kellen Moore. And he's able to get it complete to Austin Pettis out to the 21. You know, that's the one thing about Kellen Moore when you turn on the tape and watch him. The way he handles the football. Play action. 
deep ball, the way he just moves in the pocket and does everything in such a calm, cool manner that the secondary has a hard time picking up keys and clues about what's going on because he doesn't really give anything away. Earl's in motion on second and two. Here's Martin. And Doug Martin. A good run right up the gut of that Wolfpack defense out past the 33. Finally tracked down by the quarterback, Doyle Miller. Yeah, well, that offensive line does a nice job up front, too. And when you get Dan Paul, 47, that big fullback getting in there, that's a problem. He can really help open up a hole. He's excited to be out here playing against Nevada again. Well, there he is right there. You see him get through there? I mean, he just comes in and blasts folks. He, what, three touchdowns last, last year? Last year he became an offensive <laughs> superstar on uh, real role for Dan Paul. Had three touchdown catches. Here's Martin again breaking that initial tackle. You know, we were talking about Kellen Moore and his play action ability and his ability to throw the deep ball much improved over last season. He is such a calm and cool customer. Look at what he's done in his career. I mean, almost 10,000 yards passing already, and he's only a junior. Yeah, what's remarkable, only 18 career interceptions over 1,100 attempts as the country's number one passer rating on course for potentially the highest passer rating of all time. It's a pass on second and seven, and this time he goes down. Ryan Colson and Dante Moak got to him, and Nevada does have a lot of speed off the edge, Rod. Oh, they brought a little stunt that time. Moka is the speed guy that they try to use. Well, take a look here. They bring him up late. They bring some pressure outside. They stun him around. They want to free up 55 Moka. And he uses a twist to get free, and Moka is able to get in there and help make that play. Only the sixth sack allowed by Boise State this year. Third and 12 now. Pettis, first down. Calm, cool, and collected, and a pitch and catch more to Pettis for a first down. You know, Tess, I saw a lot of players stop because I think they heard a whistle. But I think it came from the crowd. There were so many players not moving, and they just watched that play. They moved the pocket, and Pettis was pretty much wide open. I think the whistle had an impact. Martin tries to spin free, able to get to the 44-yard line. You know, we did that Boise game at Idaho a couple weeks ago, and that actually became a concern. Yeah. And the WAC referee had to say something yeah. to the Idaho crowd. I, I think they'll pay a little closer attention to that now. You know, if you haven't seen a lot of Boise State, you think about trickeration and a lot of passing, you don't realize that they're a very physical team that loves to run the football. Martin getting a lot of work early on here, close to that line to make the 40-yard line. This is a Nevada defense that statistically has been good against the run, but Fresno State gashed them for 250 plus. California gashed them for 250 plus. So Boise State certainly feels that they can run against this defense. So first down as the clock counts down here in the first quarter. Kellen Moore. Here's Dan Paul out of the backfield now. The big fullback. Ball came loose at the end there. You see the linesman ruling him down as Nevada's player battling for it. Isaiah Free undercut Dan Paul. You see Brandon Marshall trying to jump on that ball there. Watch the end of this play, Rod. Yeah. That's a good tackle here. Does that ball come out? That ball is out but recovered by Paul. That ball is loose, and that is a good recovery, too. Ball came loose, and you saw that Brandon Marshall's 
halfway out of bounds jumping on it as they rolled it down that is the end of the first quarter a field goal lead for number four. Joe and Rod back here in Reno the biggest little city in the world they turned that fame arch blue this week to support their wolf pack number four in town Boise up three zip. Saturday night football continues on ABC number 13 Oklahoma number nine Oklahoma State who will be in the driver's seat for that Big 12 championship game Saturday night football presented by Southwest Airlines 8 Eastern 5 Pacific on ABC if Oklahoma State wins that that'll be a, a change new blood winning the Big 12 South first down Doug Martin Trying to find some running room, not much happening against that Wolfpack front four. James Michael Johnson filling that hole. Well, Tess, Boise State usually starts fast, but it's been limited tonight. Three nothing. Brodsman had a 33-yard field goal. George Iloka got a pick, stopped a Kaepernick drive. Kaepernick was two of three throwing the football. He has not tried to run the ball much yet. Ball now in motion, the fullback. Martin again getting a lot of work early on here is Doug Martin. And Ryan Colson and Kevin Grimes corral them. This is the area of the field where Moore tends to look to Austin Pettis. Pettis has Great size at 6'3", great body control, can make acrobatic catches, can lean on smaller defensive backs, and more tends to look for him down here. He's their all-time reception leader. Third and nine, pressure comes. First down, Jeremy Avery out of the backfield. Shades of last year. Last year, Nevada blew assignments on four occasions with running backs, fullbacks coming out of the backfield and left them wide open. And it happened again. Doug Martin in pass protection picked up Marlon Johnson and gave Moore just enough time to get that to Avery. 16 yards on third and nine. Martin fights his way inside the five you know Tess, that issue of not covering backs out of the backfield is really a linebacker issue safety linebacker issue they lose the guy who's in the backfield you count receivers from the outside in, and usually linebackers and safeties pick up the second or third guy inside and if they lose him he's wide open Jeremy Avery is often that guy who gets yes. lost isn't he yes <laughs> he has a knack for that second and goal Here's Martin. Gets oh. free and into the end zone. <laughs> Three would be tacklers. Doug Martin kept his balance. And Boise scores their first touchdown of the night. And we talk about yards after contact with him. Watch the yards after contact. One missed tackle, a second, a third. All the yards came after, after he'd been hit. And Kyle Brotsman, now 227 career PATs. The Wax all-time leading scorer. 13 play drive. Martin, a four-yard touchdown run. 10 zip poison. Keep your mind on the ground and off of mine's all right. Like hard on the ball on the square. 10 zip Boise coming off Martin's touchdown. Joe and Rod in the booth. David Diaz and Fonte are field level analysts. Well, Boise has become one of the real hot topics in college football. Frank Beamer. Hey, the reality is they're just like playing Bama, like playing Southern Cal. They've got a quality football team. You hear it throughout the whack. How about Dick Tomey? I think they're the best team in the country. Everyone is so reluctant to give them the credit. Greg McMacken out of Hawaii. The best team we've played defensively. Nobody has shut us down like that. Rob Akey at Idaho, the best Boise team I've ever seen. Of course, Pat Hill at Fresno State, who's played everybody. We've been manhandled. We've never been manhandled like that. I'll take Boise against anyone in the country. Let's check in on field level with Dave. 
Hey guys, I had a conversation with Pat Hill earlier this week. He talked about they have played USC when they ranked number one, scored 42 points on them. Oklahoma when they were number one, scored 35 points on them. And after they played Boise State, he said they are absolutely the best team Fresno State has ever played. Here's Mike Ball on the return for the Wolfpack. And Ball unable to make it back to the 20, taken down by Travis Stanaway. Well, Tess, you know, coaches around the country are jumping on board with that, as are observers. If you look at the polls, you'll see more and more folks are voting Boise State ahead of TCU. So holding on the return against Nevada. Broncos have scored first in 11 games this season and now have built double digit leads nine times before allowing a score. Colin Kaepernick when we return. ESPN's college football primetime. Brought to you by Lexus. This is the pursuit of tomorrow. This is the pursuit of perfection. And Farmers Insurance. Find a knowledgeable local farmers agent at farmers.com. We are insurance. We are farmers. You see many of the buildings in downtown Reno shaded blue tonight to support the Wolfpack. The biggest game that they've ever had here. The number four has come to town. You got BCS title hopes alive. You have yep. the Rose Bowl on the line. Yep. By Tawa. And Tawa straight ahead, taken down by Jerron Johnson. Colin Kaepernick, the quarterback for Nevada. Only needs 16 more rushing yards to become the first player in FBS history with three seasons of at least 2,000 pass yards and 1,000 rushing yards. Well, this is, this is his night. This is the night. This is the game that he's waited for. He's a senior. Now to pass on second and three, and he is able to get it complete for a first down as Rashard Matthews, by far their best receiver, according to Coach Chris Alt. Well, a 21 yard gain there. Well, Tess Matthews, great size at 6'2, 215, a big body with good speed, getting single coverage and gets some separation. And you see the timing. The ball was out there as he came out of his break. Kaepernick, Kaepernick really doing a much better job of throwing that out loud. That is where he has improved. His accuracy, his throwing motion and delivery, extending that arm and getting the results. Now he's going downfield and he overthrows the intended target. Let's take a look at tonight's impact players brought to you by Tommy Hilfiger. Well, our impact players on that defense are really in the secondary. Jerron Johnson, outstanding safety. He's a, one of their leading tacklers. He's charged with keeping Kaepernick in the box, not letting him get to the edge. And he gets a little bit of help on the other side also from George Iloka, the other safety who's already had an impact with a pick to stop the initial drive by Nevada tonight. Shut him down on their first drive. Kaepernick now able to get out close to the 42-yard line. So they were held scoreless in that first quarter only the fourth quarter out of 45 quarters that Nevada was held scoreless it's what Boise State does to you and, and this is a critical third down because you're in danger of that Boise State onslaught when they get it going they've got 10 points they get you off the field they get their offense back they come in and attack you and you're down three scores and now you're off your game plan they have to pick up this third down to answer what Boise State has done already Third and five with that pistol formation. And that is to the 50-yard line to Matthews. A good strike thrown by Kaepernick. Well, Tess, we talked about this. Kaepernick has to have a big game. They've got him on the move. He's been throwing the ball well. Everything to the outside, he's been on target with. That is the way they're trying to open things up for the running attack and for Kaepernick to later run to the outside. They're doing it with his arm. First set of downs now. Tower whistles blow, flag comes in.
false start to issue with referee Robert Cameron's mic there. I don't blame him. It's cold. Some things will freeze up out here. Maybe the mics. Not, not you. You can see their breath there out on the field. Chilly night here in the high Sierras. Currently 31 degrees. So backed up to a first and 15. Kaepernick now being pressured and being taken down by Winston Venable. Well, he just underestimated Venable. He thought he could get outside of Winston Venable pretty easily and kind of took it easy. And watch how Venable 17 closes this after he gets rid of his blocker. He's got the angle on him, but Kaepernick doesn't really think it's much of an issue and doesn't really turn it on. Winston's dad, Max, a great baseball player in the majors. His brother, Will, a San Diego Padres outfielder. And he is a bullet, speedy, fast, hybrid linebacker. Nickelback will come after you. Second and 25 now. He goes down at the 20 this time. They are in reverse. Ricky Chongachu that time. Well, they get pressure every way. They bring a little. Chongachu is going to come around. Kaepernick gets caught up inside. They they stunt their line. There's the twist. Here comes 43. Chongachu inside. Stepping up to make the sack. That defensive front, that front four, really, really good. Minus five on the penalty, minus ten on the sack. Another six-yard loss on the sack. How about third and 31? And Kaepernick looking for Shepard that time, but it goes incomplete. Shepard, you see that foot coming down, hitting the white. Yeah, he, he came up with it, just too late, out of bounds. And this, again, Tess, this is the danger zone. The defense has pushed you back. The offense will get the ball. Billy Wynn almost blocked Brad Langley's last punt. Chris Potter to return. Here's Potter at the 23. Potter out to midfield before he has wrestled down. Good return by Potter. 28 yard return, 10 zip Boise. ESPN's College Football Prime Time brought to you by Wrangler. For unbeatable comfort and value, you can count on Wrangler. Wrangler. Jeans. Boise State Broncos, only team in the country ranked in the top five in both total offense and total defense. You know what I'm thinking here, right? Well, prime field position, little trick play. Yep, or deep ball. I've seen it many times out of them. Here is the play action. Pettis in stride, ball came loose. You know, this team loves to attack you when they have you on the ropes. Just an inside route by Pettis crossing the field. The ball right on the money. That's about the only time you'll ever see him drop that ball. There's Dante Moak was back there. That's a defensive end. Talk about speed and quickness wow. and athleticism. He got back there to make that play. That's remarkable. Yep. Outstanding. Jeremy Avery now in the backfield with Kellen Moore. There's Pettis. Tries to wiggle free, taken down at the 40 yard line by Doyle Miller. But Kellen Moore is such an effortless passer. Everything is compact, smooth, tight, comes out easily. No wasted motion, no big windup, just perfect darts. Very relaxed and efficient. And now here you go, Rod. Yep. Go walk out. Moore splits out. As Avery is the Wildcat quarterback. 
And Avery surges ahead for the first down. Jeremy Avery has had at least a touchdown in six of the last seven games. He is the change of pace running back. He is not the powerful guy. He is the quick change of direction. I will get around you guy. And remember DJ Harper who was one of their featured backs injured and out. He was averaging almost nine yards a carry as their go to guy. Avery down the eye formation. Gets the pitch. And Avery has wrapped up that time. Brett Roy and James Michael Johnson. And Nevada has done a good job defensively of keeping Titus Young in front of them. One of their concerns coming in was making sure that Young didn't get behind them and they didn't give up a big play early on. And they have sacrificed short throws and a little bit of run defense to make sure they don't get up that big play. They go with Avery behind center for a direct snap again. This time he gives to Martin. And Doug Martin has a first down for the Broncos. Hard hit by Ryan Colson. You know, when you go to that Wildcat formation, you sort of balance up the defense because now your quarterback is, is a player. He is a blocker or a runner. So you actually have one extra blocker. In a traditional offense, your quarterback is always out of the play, so you're playing 9 on 11. And now you get yourself back in there, one more guy. How about that hit by Colson? Colson's a real player, man. And now real more player. back under center. First down for the Broncos. Going for Titus Young. Touchdown, Boise. Well, they caught him in man coverage. We had just talked about the fact that Nevada was playing deep. They were not playing man coverage. They didn't want that. But Fry this time gets hooked up with Young in single coverage, and Moore will always find it. He found the weakness, and he went to it right away. 29th touchdown pass of the year for Kellen Moore to one of his favorite targets. And Grossman puts it through. Just like they always do. Fast start. 17 zip. 26 yard touchdown by Young. Kellen Moore reads defenses so well. If you do not disguise it, he will find it. He sees the man coverage there. He knows that's man. He knows this guy is not in single coverage there. He sees it right away, picks it up, knows where the weakness is, knows that Titus Young is locked up in single coverage with Fry to the outside and doesn't waste any time going over there. You have got to disguise your coverages better against that quarterback or he will eat you alive. Take a look back with our Dodge Ram drive recap. See six plays going 48 yards. Young with the touchdown catch. So Boise State has scored now on all three possessions. Field goal after the interception. And then the Doug Martin touchdown. And then that beauty by Kellen Moore to Titus Young. Remember we talked about the start, how they confuse you, they test you, they script. They find out what you're doing. After they've done that on that opening drive, they come back and they go, field goal, touchdown, touchdown. They figure it out. They roll you, and now you're on your heels. And here's Mike Ball. And Ball out to the 29. Let's check in with David Diaz and Fonte. Hey, guys. Offensive line coach James Spady talking to that group up front left by, led by John Bender is telling them they have got to pick up the line stunts. Boise State's trying to tee off on them. More importantly, they've got to get back to doing what they are, and that's running the football. Got to try and dominate the line of scrimmage. Well, David, you're absolutely right. The one thing I've noticed they haven't done, they have not gotten Kaepernick to the outside, and they've thrown it, but he's a missing part of that offense. When he's not running to the outside, you lose a lot of what they do offensively. Kaepernick to pass. Going downfield, looking for Matthews, and he comes up with it. Rashad Matthews. Boy, they needed a big play, and Kaepernick delivered it. 
Yes, he did, and Matthews delivered it. Matthews did a nice job on Thompson of actually kind of separating. This ball is a little underthrown. He gets single coverage, and Matthews works Thompson a little bit, just a little shove to get a little distance, and comes up with that ball. And they need this. They need to get back in the game now. Ty Tower. Tower with just a gain of two that time. 47 yard reception, the longest pass allowed by Boise's defense this season. Well, they've figured out right now in the battle that they can work the man coverage to the outside. They're not trying to throw the ball down the middle. There's a safety hanging around the middle. They're playing man coverage outside, inside technique, outside guy available, so they're throwing to the outside. Kaepernick. And here goes Matthews. Touchdown, Nevada. Brandon Thompson missed on the play. Rashard Matthews brought it in. Take a look here at the sideline, Rod. Oh, Does he, he step out? Oh, he was Cadillacing and not paying attention. He a was looking casual. Oh, my goodness. He had no reason to let that happen. There was nobody threatening him. He took it easy, a little style, a little flash, and that touchdown will come back. Wow. He stepped out of bounds. Stepped out at the five. So instead of a seven, it's first and goal. You know, it's simple. First charge timeout for the first half. This is a 30-second timeout. You know, get to the end zone and then celebrate. He looks back, and when he does, That's his right. foot strides yep. onto the white. Yep, right there at the five-yard line. You know, just be focused and disciplined, get to the end zone, and you can have all the fun you want. Wow. Nice use of the timeout by Boise State. Well, Chris Ault, the Hall of Fame head coach for Nevada, he nailed one thing, and that was that Rashard Matthews needed to be the big play guy, the guy who steps up tonight for them to have any chance against Boise. Listen for the whistle here. Yeah, you hear yeah. it. Yeah. You saw side judge there. Yeah. Quick to whistle as soon as he saw that foot hit the white. So first in goal now. Tower. Muscles his way in. Team on that left side. Great blocking over there. Great job done up front on that left side by Matt Slater. 72 over there. Anthony Martinez tacks on the extra point. And Nevada gets back in this game by Tower. The touchdown run to cap that drive. going for Boise to put them up 10 zip a hard-earned touchdown run then Kellen Moore to Titus Young 17 zip it was turning into a typical Boise game but after a couple good receptions by Matthews by Tawa this Nevada on the board for the first time tonight that was a huge answer for Nevada's offense 17-7, number four against number 19 with BCS Bolt implications. Titus Young looking for room. 
Young cuts back, and a flag comes in at the end of that return. Celebrating its six year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets. All state makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. To date, All state has contributed more than $2.4 million in scholarship monies. This Boise State offensive line has had a little trouble with Dante Moke and his speed getting into the backfield. Moke, number 55, the nation's active leader in tackles for loss. Has 60 and a half. Martin cuts back. And a good choice as he goes for nine yards there, finding that hole. So much on the line tonight. Of course, it was such an interesting day with all the emotion going on, the comeback by Auburn. Many wow. around our hotel packed with Boise fans and the team. They were sitting there. With their jaws dropped on that Auburn comeback, thinking maybe they could be playing for a national title spot tonight. And then Arizona hanging early with Oregon before the Ducks go out there and cruise to an impressive victory. And now Moore finds a wide open Austin Pettis. Pettis out to midfield. Ball comes loose at the end. I think he got there it back. Is a scramble for it. I believe he yeah, did. I think he got it back. Good ball handling by Moore as he fakes things and allows Pettis to come back across the middle. And a good hit again by Colson. How about these getting, defensive yeah. ends getting downfield against wide receivers? And a nice scramble by Pettis to get back on that football as Colson really delivered a blow. Colson and Moak, 20, 25 yards downfield at the end of some of these plays. Martin now to the near side. Blockers in front. Doug Martin. Here he goes. Watch out. Doug Martin. Score it. 51 yard touchdown run. Well, they did something we thought they wouldn't do. They brought a blitz. They caught him inside with the blitz. They had no safety there. Kyle Ifa with a great block on the edge. And that was all she wrote. But you see the blitz coming up the middle inside. And they catch him. They get Martin to the outside. Perfect call at the perfect time. Catching Grimes coming in inside with the blitz and Johnson number eight. They get around them. Just three plays in 81 seconds after Nevada thinks they've got some momentum and they score. Boise comes right back. 51-yard touchdown run. Hey, Tess, we didn't think they would do this. They were so afraid of things that bringing a blitz was not the thing you would get from these guys, that they would not try that at all. They brought the blitz inside, and the sweep comes outside. Kyle Ifa, 80, with a great block. They caught them inside. They were so deathly afraid of Titus's young speed that Nevada seemed like they would stay away from the blitz. But they got caught with it that time, and they really got burned with that. You know, these top four teams in the country, these undefeated teams that are contending for the national title and or Rose Bowl position in years in the case with these non-AQs, they all have something that they're so great at. You got Oregon's fast offense. Auburn has the best player in college yep. football. Yep. TCU with the defense. Yep. But when you watch Boise week in and week out, the one thing you take away, it's the most complete team in every aspect. They're so balanced in every way, Rob. I think that's absolutely right. I think most people would agree with that when they watch them. Here's Wooten now. Wooten trying to get to the outside, and he is wrapped up at the 24. Big Ten title, birth to the Rose Bowl on the line Saturday on the ESPN Family and Networks. First at noon Eastern on ESPN2. You have Michigan State, Penn State, Michigan, Ohio State. Their rivalry will be at noon on ABC. And then Northwestern Wisconsin, of course, all the scenarios with how the Big Ten can play out here. 
with Michigan State, Ohio State, and Wisconsin the standing one, on top. The one thing you need to know is that if all three of them win, the highest rated in the BCS would go to the Rose Bowl. And right now, Wisconsin is number seven in the BCS. Kaepernick, he was looking for his tight end, Virgil Green. Now, I really think Virgil Green is a huge part of this offense. He has the ability to get down the field, and when he blocks in space on the edge, he really helps Kaepernick make big plays. Kaepernick passing out of the pistol now and looking for his favorite target and finding Richard Matthews. Matthews already playing a big role tonight. Well, we watched Kaepernick in practice yesterday. Uh, an unusual day before practice. They go full. Full. They had shoulder pads, helmets, and they went for two hours. And that's number normal for them. You don't find teams that do that, but they did that. But he threw the ball well yesterday. By the way, Matthews already 133 yards. What an impressive first half for the junior receiver. First down toss now. This time he's able to connect to Wimberley. Now the thing you notice about Kaepernick and the way they use him, he's got such a strong arm. Those long outs, those, those, uh, those seven routes, those corner routes, those are things that he throws very well because he has such a strong arm. He's a young man who is a Major League Baseball draft pick. And the Cubs pitching prospect. Well, he's football through and through. Now with time on second and three, looking for running room. Instead, he tries to get it to Matthews. You know, with Kaepernick's speed, once he gets outside those tackles, he's very dangerous that time choosing the throw. I would encourage him to run when he Indeed. gets outside like that. Now you talked about that arm, you know, that fastball 90 plus miles an hour. He was such a good baseball player that it scared off a lot of football coaches. He only had one offer coming out of high school, and that was from Nevada. And you see that he's become less of a sidearm baseball thrower, more of an over-the-top guy with touch, and his accuracy has improved. Now facing a third and three. And they go with the fly sweep. And coming up short is Shepard as Winston Venable once again so fast to get to the ball. Yeah, well, you know, we talked about a test. They're using those safeties. You know, Venable, Johnson, Iloka, they're hanging out on the edge. They don't want anything outside. They're forcing everything inside. And Venable keeps his leverage and makes that play. They are inviting Nevada to run the dive, to run inside, and they're telling them, no way are you going to, we're going to let you run to the outside. So Langley back on to punt. Mitch Burrows at the 15. And he calls for the fair catch and it settles in at the 12. Coming up on the college football halftime report, Steve Unin is going to look back at that Iron Bowl thriller. What a game between Bama and Auburn. Of course, Oregon took care of business, and Nebraska headed to the Big 12 championship. We will find out tomorrow who could be in position to meet them. You know what? I think what was overlooked in that Auburn game, the coaching job that Gus Malzahn did, offensive coordinator, and that was amazing the way he got his team going against a Nick Saban defense to score 28 straight points. Good adjustment at the half for Auburn. And now Martin. Doug Martin just gets those shoulder pads down, muscles ahead. So this was the scene earlier today. Everybody here in Reno wanted to see what happened. The last play, you see the reaction of the Boise State fans. And we were staying at the team hotel, a hotel packed, a casino resort here in Reno that was packed with Boise fans. And hey, you talk to people in the elevators. Oh, what happened? Can you believe hey, Alabama Reno, lost that lead? That's Reno, what was saying. Reno was a complete football town today. No question about it. 
Here's Martin again. Good block in front by Dan Paul, his fullback. And he's able to pick up a yard past that first down line to make. Now a football town today and a football town tonight as they are hosting what nobody hesitates to say is the biggest game yeah. in the history of Nevada football. Well, you're coming down to it. I mean, you've got Oregon at one, Auburn at two. Boise State with the win, poised to jump over TCU and become number three. And then next weekend, it will all shake out. Chris all pacing the sidelines. He knows what a tough task this is, and they've been in this position of being down big against Boise before as Martin tries to wrestle free for a yard. It's happened in recent years as Nevada has given up leads. They were down 27 to 3 last year and rallied back. They were down 24 to 3 in 08 and rallied back. That man has been a workhorse in the first half. Big half for Doug Martin. 24 to 7 for the fourth ranked team in the country. Martin with that 51 yard touchdown run to cap the scoring in Boise's first half. 137 yards for their featured back. Let's go down the field with David. All right, Coach uh, Chris Peterson, you guys have been able to perform so well in the first half. Kellen Moore, Doug Martin have been able to control things offensively. What's been the key to success? Some big third down conversions. Yeah, I think that, the third down, being able to run the ball a little bit. We're going to have to hit some big plays, there's no question, because they're very, very explosive on offense. And defensively, you guys have been able to slow down that pistol attack. What's been the key to that? Well, I think everybody's holding their gap, playing their assignments. They hurt us a little bit in the passing game, but it's going to be like that when you're playing a really good team. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. Thank you. All right, back up to you guys. All right, thanks, Dave. Now let's join Steve Unin back in the studio for the college football halftime report. Gentlemen. Thank you, guys. Quite the scene out there in Reno. Gilmore up here in booth, David Diaz and Fonte, our field level analyst, and we have a 24 to 7 lead by number four in the country. Rod, I always laugh when people still frame Boise as being a finesse passing team, <laughs> and then you see Doug Martin go out and do what he did in that first yeah. half. Our game track is brought to you by Fidelity Investments, and you get a heavy dose of Doug Martin. Old school football, and it means physical, run it at you, run it down your throat. Doug Martin, a lot of yards after contact. Vitala responded with a five-yard touchdown of his own. Kellen Moore, we see it every week. He finds his man, Titus Young, in the end zone, beating man coverage for one of their big plays, their touchdowns that they got in the first half. Again, Nevada struggling to run the football. I think that's been a big issue for them. They have not gotten big plays on the ground, particularly from Kaepernick. Doug Martin, 137 rushing yards and a couple of scores in that first half. Of course, that Boise defense has been stellar all year long as well. So Boise set to receive here to start off this second half. And here is Titus Young. Oh, and Young takes a big hit down there at the 22-yard line. That was Albert Rossetti. Let's check in with David. Hey guys, I had a chance to talk to Coach All coming out after halftime. He talked about they have to find a way to shut down the running game of Boise State. Doug Martin, 137 yards in the first half. Missed tackles and he got to play with better leverage. Also, they got to find a way to convert on short yardage situations to keep their drives alive. Thanks, Dave. You know, Nevada has gone down this road before with Boise of trailing early, rallying back. But they have to stop this Boise offense to have a chance. Here's Martin. This time only a couple. As Ryan Colson was quick to get to Martin. The problem with stopping the Boise State run game for them is that they're going to have to bring an extra guy in to help. A safety. 
And when you get that eighth guy in there, now you're leaving Titus Young in single coverage or Pettis an, an open zone area underneath to work, and they'll throw the ball on you. That's the dilemma Nevada is facing by trying to stop the run. Kellen Moore will just slice you up if that plays out. Here is Pettis in motion on second and eight. Titus Young now. Good blocks in front. Look at how fast Titus Young is. Those first couple of steps, and he is off. Well, he's explosive. And that's why he is probably the top NFL prospect on this Boise State team. So quick, so explosive. Translates well to the next level. A step, and he's at full speed. Good block that time by Burroughs as well as Pettis. So a first down out to the 38. Martin gives a little and adds on to his total to the night as he's out to the 44 yard line. Colson finally wrapped him up. Oh, Martin with 144 yards. Well, I want to know how many after contact on that run. That was another three yards after contact. Talking about a guy who goes at about 5'9 and 212 pounds. You get the power back in Martin, and now you see the speed back with Avery. Here's Burroughs. Takes advantage of the block, and he's out past midfield. And how quick was Kellen Moore to just get rid of that ball? He saw it out of the corner of his eye. He saw the defender on the right side tip that he was coming, and Moore knew right away. Look at the right side. And now he looks over and he sees his man Burroughs right there. And he says, well, I'll just throw it to Mitch Burroughs. That's where the blitz is coming from. They can't cover him. There is just a football intelligence with Kellen Moore. You're talking about a guy who bought the Boise State playbooks when he was in high school. Oh, there's some great stories about how obsessed he was with formations and play calling in high school. And here to the near side now is Avery. James Michael Johnson ran him down. Of course, this game of such importance. You look at those BCS standings, and Rod, obviously, playing number 19 tonight. Boise expected, with a win tonight, to launch past TCU. Oregon and Auburn took care of business today. Well, Boise State has been stalking TCU the last three weeks or so, cutting their lead in half every week. It's clear if they win tonight, they will move beyond TCU when the rank rate uh, standings come out on Sunday. Second and eight, Moore over the middle, and that should have been caught. Mitch Burroughs hit him in the chest, made a good effort to get to it, but then didn't secure it. Dante Moak had the pressure on Moore. And Tess, the importance of being in that third spot in the BCS for a non-AQ means that you are first in line to go to the Rose Bowl if Oregon winds up in the national championship game. That's right. The Rose is obligated to take the top qualifier from the BCS non-AQ when it loses one of its anchor teams to the title game. Could be the case with Oregon. Third and eight now. Moore launching it for Titus Young. Right through his hands. Moore took a shot. Doyle Miller had the coverage. Young couldn't connect with it. Well, Miller did a nice job of really kind of just pushing and stressing Young down the field. He stays with him, little contact there, gets his hand in there, nothing worth flagging him about. And Young couldn't come up with it. But And here on fourth down, Kellen Moore staying on the field. Well, he can kick it, too. Yeah. He has had those pooch punts. So a timeout called by Coach Chris Alt. Nevada will talk things over. Coach Alt, of course, the father of the pistol offense, but that offense not getting into gear yet tonight. Well, you know, we were talking about the BCS earlier and how Boise State is poised to jump over TCU, and they've been stalking them for the last couple of weeks. Well, you see the numbers. In week 11, you know, TCU had a nice little lead, and then they had a problem. The San Diego State game ended up being a five-point win, 
and then they were off the next week. And while they were kind of middling around, Boise State was just gaining momentum and playing well. And now they are right behind them and a win. The computers will probably put them ahead. The voters have already jumped over to Boise State over TCU, putting Boise State at three and TCU at four. And voters gave Boise more first place votes, coaches poll wise, than Auburn last week. So they have the support in the human polls. And that is Boise's first punt of the night. 12.09 to go in the third. First time they have punted tonight. Colin Kaepernick, does he have the answers? We'll find out when we return. Nevada star quarterback Colin Kaepernick in a 17-point hole to the number four team in the country. Let's take a look back at Nevada's senior night in real time brought to you by Wendy's. He's a two-time first-team All-Lack selection. He's one of just four players in school history to rush for 4,000 yards in a career, and he's had three straight seasons of 1,000 rushing yards. Number 34, Vi Tawa. His name can be found throughout the Nevada, WAC, and NCAA record books. A two-time academic All-American, Heisman Trophy candidate, and co-captain, your quarterback, number 10, Colin Kaepernick. Colin Kaepernick, one of the best ever played here at Nevada, needs to be at his very best now to mount a comeback. By Tawa. Corralled by Chase Baker. Baker, number 97 in that front four. Coach Pete says he deserves a lot more attention. See the numbers on Kaepernick. Minus nine rushing yards, Rob. Well, and a special senior. What a compelling personal story he has. A young man who's biracial was adopted. Born to a 19-year-old struggling birth mother who gave him up for adoption. Now out of the pistol here on second and seven. Able to complete it this time. Matthews and he fights for the first down. His birth mother put him up for adoption and listed three criteria for the adoptive parents. Siblings, financial stability, and love of sports. She didn't care about race or religion. And these are his parents who adopted him five weeks after he was born. Teresa and Rick. Rick is in the hat to the left. And there's his mom. They Teresa. were so proud of the senior night tonight. Now to pass on first down and once again complete to his favorite target, Matthews. Matthews is having a heck of a night for the Wolfpack. You know, Tess, the fascinating thing about the adoption is that Teresa and Rick had two older kids of their own, and then they lost two infants to congenital heart defects, and they wanted to continue to adopt, and they did, and got Colin and raised him as their own. Very close-knit family. See Teresa and Rick here on senior night. By Towell with a good hard run crossing midfield. And, Rod, I thought it was interesting also to hear that he's never met his birth mother, but she did come to a game last year. Yeah, you know, she actually, well, current day, she friended him on Facebook a couple of years ago, stayed in touch, did not say anything to him, but came to a game, wanted to see him play, didn't tell him until a week later. But he's never met her or actually talked to her on the phone. Second and four, and Tawa dives ahead for a first down. So now some consistency here with this Wolfpack offense. Well, they've gone back to that dive play in, the, in their read option package that they use. But the thing that I'm continuing to look for is for Colin Kaepernick to pull the ball down and get to the outside or for them to do a design run with the lead blocker to get him outside. Fresh set of downs for Nevada. Here he goes. Kaepernick, can he get to the edge? He was chased down that time by Jerron Johnson. Well, see, Tess, that's the home run play. I mean, that's the thing that makes everybody with Nevada feel good. It's like a breakaway slam dunk. You see Colin Kaepernick running around, doing his thing, slamming the ball, and everybody gets all juiced up. Boise State has taken that away. They've taken it away with their safeties hanging outside, forcing Nevada to run inside. But Nevada can't give up. They have to get Kaepernick involved running the football. Kaepernick with time. Plenty of it. Lofts it. 
and sails out. Young man put a lot of pressure on himself this week. He said this was the biggest game of his life. He did not want to leave school without beating Boise State. Wants a WAC championship. Tired of hearing all the talk about Boise State. Says Nevada has something to play for also. Well, think of being a star of his level and his accomplishments in this same era of all this Boise dominance in conference play. Third and six now. Keep it on the ground with Tawa, and he's going to come up short as Daryl Acree and Aaron Tevis collapsed on Vi Tawa. You know, Tess, a good defense will go and take away what you do best, your most prized thing. And Boise State has taken away Colin Kaepernick's ability to run the football. That's the one thing they've eliminated, and Nevada has struggled because of it. Fourth and one now. Tower straight ahead for the first down. So Chris Alt has to get Kaepernick more involved on the ground. He's thrown it well, but take a look at what's happened. Only three rushes. One to the outside, two inside. Now he takes a shot downfield. And the only man running with that was Boise cornerback Brandon Thompson. Richard Matthews was the intended target. He stopped running at the 10. Yeah, he broke it off. Thompson kept going. Matthews has. Had a big night. 156 yards on eight catches. Those are career highs for him. That was the game plan coming in. Make Matthews a big part of the night. Second and ten. Here comes pressure. They set up the screen. Tower blockers in front. Loses the football. But it is picked up by Matthews, who advances it for a first down. Wow. How about that? <laughs> wow. He's having a big night every which way. Watch the ball pop out. And they had this set up. And Thompson is the guy that actually gets his hand in there. But Matthews is right on the spot. Smart play by Matthews to be aware. Yeah, it was Thompson who was able to get his right hand in there and knock it away from Vitale. There's the tight end, Green. And Virgil Green. They've been trying to get into the mix. Run down by Jamar Taylor. Well, there's just no getting outside. I keep looking for them to come maybe with Virgil Green as the lead blocker with Parker behind uh, with Kaepernick behind him something like that but Boise State is dictating where the football will be run now. Shane McClellan just one of those fast and active defensive linemen for the Broncos. Kaepernick has time and that is incomplete. As you saw, Jerron Johnson get in on the coverage against Virgil Green, and the no flag doesn't go over well here. No, it's in good Reno. call. Good call. Good no call. Virgil Green's got to come back for the football. He got beyond the first down marker, and he just settles and he waits for the ball. And that allows Johnson to come in and make the play. He's got to come back to Kaepernick and make that catch and shorten that distance so that Johnson couldn't get his hands in there. Just inside the 11. Off the hands. Way, Matthews. way too hot. Boy, did he send that one in there. That was one of those 93 mile an hour fastballs. I mean, if he had caught that, I mean, it would have put a hole in it. That's the stuff that the Cubs saw when they drafted him. 
but it was much too much oh. Matt's used to hold on to. Yeah, and he's he's tangled up in there with Thompson, couldn't get his hands up. But that thing had a lot of mustard on it. You can't make that catch. That on a night like tonight, that'll break a finger. Nevada's only made one field goal in their last six games. Here's Anthony Martinez from 35. It is blocked. Ball is loose at midfield. Boise trying to scoop it up. And they do. What a turn of events as Jamar Taylor has the ball all the way to the 10 yard line. Flag comes in. Maybe an illegal batted ball. I thought it got batted, and I wasn't sure if that was Venable who did it, but I thought it was batted right off the bat. Tyrone Crawford came in and blocked it. batting by the return team. 15-yard penalty from the spot of foul. First down. Yeah, Winston Venable came in off the right side, and after that ball was blocked, I think it was Tyrone Crawford who got in there. Venable got in and then slapped it forward. Now Crawford up on the right side gets in. Number 40, he gets the block. Now watch Venable. Watch 17. He purposely. just slapped it. Yeah. yeah, Venable purposely slaps it past midfield. And then Taylor, well, Taylor was on the retreat. Yeah, Taylor accidentally kicked it forward. Taylor was trying to do it, you know, the legitimate way. But Venable made no pretense about the fact he's trying to slap it towards his end zone. ECS Countdown Show presented by Physio will be Sunday at 8.15. And boy, is it going to be a big one, Rod, as the result of tonight, most feel will launch the Broncos if they win this game. Ask TCU, we will see when the new BCS standings come out on Sunday. And Oregon and Auburn, of course, looking to maintain their status as Doug Martin crashes ahead to the 23. You'll be on that BCS countdown show on yes. Sunday. I mean, you know, every week I tune in and I watch you guys on there. And as I'm doing my Heisman segment, you guys are just <laughs> debating. But the debate <laughs> rages on every yeah. week. Of who should be where in terms of the one-loss teams? Where should Boise be compared to TCU? Reese Davis, Craig James, Robert Smith, Kirk Street. We all weigh in on it. And here is Martin. And that hard running earns another first down for the Broncos. But this week, the big reveal may show some movement for the Broncos if they can get through this one tonight. Well, not only that, Heismanology, because this is a big weekend for some of the front runners. Cam Newton, big day today. Uh, Michael it, James, Kellen Moore out here tonight. And Andrew Luck goes tomorrow. Let me tell you something. What Cam Newton was able to do in that second half today, you are looking at one of the finest yep. Heisman campaigns yep. you've ever seen. Now, that's on the field. Everybody's still waiting to see how things play on off the field with the allegations, but on the field, superb. Here's Pettis now. Cutback move, and Pettis able to get it out past the 33-yard line, taken down by Brandon Marshall. The big three. These have been the Heisman front runners all week long. Of course, we will reveal our Heismanology survey of the official voters at ESPN Sunday during the BCS show. But Kellen Moore, outstanding year. James, the top running back, and Cam Newton. I, I'm telling you, Rod, one of the best Heisman campaigns ever. Your survey is suggesting what? Likely four candidates going I to think New York. So. Or I think five? Andrew Luck will be included in a front row for the Heisman Trophy based on what he's been able to do. Now, of course, we'll see what he accomplishes tomorrow against Oregon State. Helps to have a boot on. Nate Potter's grabbing his. We'll take a break. ESPN's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Ram Trucks. Designed, tested, and proven to be the best trucks we've ever built. Ram and Disney's epic new 3D adventure, Tron Legacy, in theaters everywhere December 17th. Not yet rated. Look at that cutie. Just feels like the holidays here in the High Sierras, here in Reno. Did you get any of that in yesterday? Uh, none, of the, none of the ice skating, but plenty of that. Bundling up, trying to stay warm. <laughs> 
See your breath all week long. They had a huge snowstorm that came through, closed the 80 coming over from San Francisco, and now things heating up with this game here. Kellen Moore taken down, flag comes in. Doyle Miller finally got to him. We will see what the call is. See the holding signal. Holding. Number 86 for the offense. Who is the climb? Third, third down. Well, Tess, the coverage was excellent that time. Isaiah Fry did a nice job on Titus Young. Moore wanted to go deep to him, but Fry did a nice job of playing that double move, so Moore did not have time to get it out there. See him pull it down there? That was when the double move was going on, and when he pulled it down, he got sacked. Two sacks tonight against Kellen Moore. You don't see that often. Third and ten now. And Pettis tried to go up high for it. Sales incomplete. Coverage from Thaddeus Brown. Well, Moore's been hit more times tonight than we've probably seen all season long. And a lot of that is Dante Moak and his speed getting in there, taking shots. Watch the hit Moore takes at the end of this. That, that normally doesn't happen, but he's getting some shots tonight. That yeah, took that one to the upper back, back of the head. Moak and then James Michael Johnson coming in from the other side. Moak is a beast. He's coming off a three sack, eight tackle game. Very explosive playmaker. Rossman on to punt. Rugby style. And the ball. Penalty marker comes in. As they're talking this over. Well, the official threw the flag right away like he didn't believe there was enough room to make the catch. Waylon Ewing Burton. For Boise was down there. Kick catch interference by the kicking team. 15 yard penalty. First down. Right, they spotted that immediately. Well, I think he actually dropped this before he got hit. Now he dropped that ball and then he gets hit. That's Rashard Matthews. Yeah, I, I, I'm not. I'm not crazy about that call. I mean, there's no halo, there's no three-yard rule or five-yard rule or anything like that. You just have to give him room to make the catch. He had room to make the catch, and he dropped it. I think that's a bad call. He dropped it first, then he got hit. And as a coach, what you should ask the official is, what did you see? You don't have to question his judgment. You say, tell me what you saw. And that's what you write on your report. So the end result is a first down for Nevada out at the 42. Now Kaepernick. And he is wrapped up by Jerron Johnson. Well, we talked about it at the beginning of the night. The impact players being those safeties on the outside for Boise State. Jerron and I, uh, Jerron Johnson and Iloka. And George Iloka and those two have just been great at keeping Kaepernick inside, really kind of taking away even Nevada's desire to try to get Kaepernick to the outside. Play clock running down. Able to get it off. Tawa spinning out past midfield short of a first down but what a difference it makes when you play the Boise defense because this Nevada offense has been on fire all year long and then look at the numbers tonight. I think people haven't caught up to it. I mean I think they think Boise State at three years ago whatever outscore you this defense particularly that defensive line this year they're showing you this is a dr dr dramatically better defense. They just shut people down 44 points a game for Nevada seven tonight. They've held five of their ten opponents to one touchdown or less. Tower with a first down run. And Tess, the difference 
in that defense is really Winter Swipe playing great as he did last year. Billy Wynn even better than last season. And Shea McClellan who's really come on. But Chase Baker is the unsung hero up front. I mean he's just a, an anchor inside. Number 97 there that doesn't get a lot of attention but he stuffs a lot of things inside so that his teammates can make plays. Kaepernick on first down. As incomplete, it was off the hands of Matthews. Saturday night football continues on ABC. Battle of the rivals in the Big 12, number 13, Oklahoma, number 9, Oklahoma State. Saturday night football presented by Southwest Airlines, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. Some of the nation's going to see Notre Dame, USC, but hey, if you want to tune in and see Justin Blackman. Oh, oh man. man. I think oh. two of the best receivers yep. out there. That's a great matchup. How about the job Mike Gundy has done offensively? When you lose Dez Bryant, you know, from your offense, you lose. Uh, your quarterback from last year, Zach Robinson. Oh, Whedon has stepped oh, in. He's been great. It's unbelievable. Kendall unbelievable. Hunter, the running back, all offense there with the pokes. And now out of the backfield is Ball. And Mike Ball maintaining his balance to the 35-yard line. Really nice touch by Kaepernick. He put that ball in a spot where Ball did not have to break stride, didn't have to turn around, just able to keep heading up the field. Perfectly thrown. So Colin Kaepernick has the Wolfpack marching here, 35 yard line, facing a third down and one. Tawa stacked up. Billy Wynn collapsed him. Yeah. Chase Baker underneath him. Yeah, Wynn 6'4, 288. And it starts right here, right there and right there. Watch all the penetration they get. 90 and 97, Wynn is 90, 97 Baker. They just stuck everything right up front. And now going for it here on fourth and two. Kaepernick incomplete. Flag comes in. Jamar Taylor was covering Wimberley. Dramatic play with that big pass protection block and then Kaepernick lofting it up downfield and getting the penalty to float in was Wimberley. Pass interference, number 21 defense. 15 yard frame from the previous spot. Automatic, first down. Well, they tried to move the pocket. They wanted to get Kaepernick to the edge. And look at the protection he gets. How about Vitao with that block? That allows Kaepernick to get to the edge and there was pass interference down there. You see Taylor not look back until they had his hands on the receiver out there, Wimberly. And you're, when you're engaged like that and the ball's in the air, they're going to get you flat. I tell a military pressed Winston Venable. <laughs> Good call. <laughs> and Cap just throws this away as Shepard, the wide receiver, was covered well by George Iloka. So. No opportunity for Kaepernick to go that direction. You know, Kaepernick has to be frustrated. We have not seen him, the long strider, the guy that we've seen all season breaking these 20 plus yard runs time and time again. You know, this is what he's done against Boise State. They've gotten better against him every year. 2007, he just blew him up, and they've ratcheted it down with their safeties each year after that and straight up the middle with Mike Ball Colin Kaepernick without a positive rushing yard tonight that is yeah. remarkable yeah yeah he's one of the premier dual threat quarterbacks in the land and this Boise State defense has eliminated part of that they're not letting him run the football and he's been going through the air looking for Matthews, who has 156 yards receiving. Tower's been doing the job on the ground. And right now they need six yards. They need to cash in here, try to cut into this lead. Pressure off the edge. Can he escape it? He does. Gonna run for it. First down inside the 10. Kaepernick. Touchdown. This 
the inbounds. Left in. Right in. Ball on the pylon. He's in there. Six foot six. Fast as could be. And he goes airborne to the pylon to cut it to this lead. We got ourselves a ball game. Nevada. Well, that came in at the end of that PAT. To that extra point. But Colin Kaepernick celebrating the 18 yard touchdown. Colin Kaepernick has his Wolfpack now within 10 of the number four team in the country. Of course, he's closing in on major records. 56 rushing touchdowns, the most rushing touchdowns by a quarterback in college football history. 59 by Heisman winner Eric Crouch. He's one away from tying Tim Tebow for second place as a dual threader. 96 rushing yards now away from joining Brian Smith as the only two players to ever have had 8,000 passing, 4,000 rushing in a career. And as for this year, well, he's close to becoming the third ever to pass for 3,000 yards and run for 1,000 yards in a single season. Dan LaFever, Vince Young, the first to do that. He is something special. It has been a phenomenal career for Colin Kaepernick. Well, keep in mind, he's got a couple of games left next week and a bowl game as well. And on the kick by Ricky Drake after the penalty just sailed into the crowd. Let's check in with Dave. Well, Coach Hall talked about it when he came out after halftime. The defense had to find a way to get a stop on Boise State, forcing a punt twice in the third quarter. And it was Colin Kaepernick able to take advantage of things, put together a drive, and put six up on the board for him. Thanks, Dave. David Diaz and Fonte are field level analysts tonight. Boise State, by the way, saw that penalty after the PAT. Four 15-yard penalties this quarter. Had a pass interference against them on that last drive as well. Jeremy Avery now on the pitch. Oh, and he is just absolutely smothered by James Michael Johnson. Well, James Michael Johnson ran that alley perfectly, sifted right through, found the lane, there he is in the middle of the screen, 52, scraping to his right, finds a hole, does not get blocked by Efa, the tight end, number 80, who tried to pick him up, but he just ran past the block. And we'll stick with Avery in the backfield with Moore here on second and 12. Moore. And that is incomplete as Pettis had to go down low. Pressure once again came from Dante Moke. Well, you know what they're doing? They're moving Dante Moke around. I mean, Dante Moke is a defensive end, but look, they stand him up and put him here, and they're gonna let him come inside. So they're disguising him and moving him around. They miss him, he splits the double team and gets another shot on Moore. The reigning WAC defensive player of the year. Nation's active leader in tackles for loss. Third and 12. Going down field. Young can't come up with it. Brown had the coverage on Young. He tried to take a step back to that ball. Test the pressure is starting to get to Moore. They're getting hits on him almost every time. They can't handle Moke on the edge. They're moving Moke around, and he's getting to Moore almost every single time. And then you've got pretty good coverage down the field, but that is Brown hanging with Young. It's Dante Mokrot. He's kind of oh, back oh. in high school in Arizona. He was the state champ in the 100 and 200 meters. It looks like it. <laughs> he's a track star playing defensive end out there. Now 
Brossman kicking to Matthews. And Matthews calls for the fair catch. Boise, three third quarter possessions, three punts. This Nevada defense has stepped up. And Colin Kaepernick ready to step on out again. Building a program is brought to you by Craftsman. Colin Kaepernick and Vi Tawa. What a combination this is. Well, they've done an outstanding job together. They are second, only behind that dynamic duo, the Pony Express. Eric Dickerson and Craig James back in the late 70s, early 80s. These guys collectively may combine for more rushing yards than the Pony Express. Came in needing 84. By Tower. Trying to add to that total and close in on being the best running duo ever in college football. Cap and Tower. This pistol offense has been a boon for Kaepernick. You know, that shotgun is at seven yards, the pistol is at four yards, and that man wanted to use that in order to develop a running attack, and he's done it with a couple of outstanding runners in his backfield. Momentum with Nevada. The defense stepped up. Kaepernick stepped to the pylon, and we got a 10-point game. A local columnist called this the biggest sporting event in Reno since heavyweight champ Jack Johnson fought here back in 1910. Start of the fourth, and they only trail Boise now by 10. Our coverage spotlight brought to you by Travelers Insurance. Well, the Boise State defense did a great job covering Colin Kaepernick almost all night. Kept him contained until he broke containment on a scramble, a broken play, got outside for an 18-yard touchdown run that energized the crowd, energized his teammates, and put Nevada right back in the ball game as their defense stood up to the Boise State offense. Start of the fourth. Kaepernick to ball. And Mike Ball. Loses his footing out of bounds. Lost the ball as he was going out of bounds. Out at the 40-yard line. Yeah, this is the first time since, oh, maybe early September that Boise State has been challenged in the second half. Most of their games have been over by midway through the third quarter. Well, they haven't trailed an opponent since the fourth quarter of that opening game against Virginia Tech. They have been... Nothing but blowouts, but this Nevada team ranked 19th with a high-powered offense. And whistles come in, flag comes in. Before the ball can be snapped, false start. Number 67, offense, five-yard penalty. First down. Third down, correction. This is a Nevada offense. That's third in the country in total offense. They average 537 yards, and they have a defense with, as we've seen, fast playmakers. Yeah, but a long time since Boise State had gone into a fourth quarter with a game in doubt. And that's a different kind of pressure. That's a different kind of situation to deal with. So a timeout called by Boise State. And it'll be a third and seven. Three years ago when these teams met, took four overtimes in Boise. That's the subject of Life's Good Flashback, brought to you by LG. Nine, 67 and you see what's happened the past three years between these teams well these seniors have not beaten the Boise State and they feel like they get closer all the time and that this 
is supposed to be their year. Third and seven now for the Wolfpack. Pressure as they set up the screen by Tawa. And Tawa has the first down, and he works his way out to the 48-yard line. You know, Tess, when, you're, when you've been beaten by a team for a couple of years, but you keep getting closer, that confidence starts to grow. You are no longer intimidated by who they are, their helmets, or anything. You start to believe that you missed a play or two the year before. If you make the play or two this time, you get the win. And a lot of reason for Nevada to be confident about themselves. Vitala. And Tala out to the 44 cross midfield. McClellan and Johnson finally got to him. There you see the eyes of Colin Kaepernick reading the action of the defensive end, the defensive line as to where they're to give that football or keep it. And most of the night he's had to keep it because Boise State wants him to give it. I mean, to, to give. They don't want him to keep it and go outside. Matthews. And Richard Matthews spinning free. Here he goes. Touchdown run by Rashard Matthews. Nevada is within three. The comeback in full stride. 24 21. Look at this scene at Mackey Stadium here in Reno. First time two ranked teams have met here. And their Wolfpack trail number four Boise 17 zip and 24 7 at the half, but they have charged back. Rashard Matthews coming around for a 44 yard touchdown run. He has 200 yards from scrimmage. Attack on 156 receiving for that 44 yard spectacular spinning run. And Boise is only up three. Titus Young from the four. There goes Titus Young now looking for a block. Titus Young cuts back. He has blockers in front. And he's out. Close to midfield, out to the 48, taken down by Albert Rossetti. Tess, let's go back to that touchdown play. Richard Matthews, an incredible individual effort. Watch him on the reverse and what he gets done there. And Boise State actually has a shot to make this play. They actually do a decent job of coming over. Now watch the coverage as they rotate back over, but both their guys go outside. Nobody comes with the inside leverage. Both go outside. Matthews sees it, makes the cut back and containment is lost. A dramatic and fantastic individual effort by Matthews. Kellen Moore now. There's Titus Young. And Titus Young with a gain of nine there as Doyle Miller was on top of him. You have to go back to the Virginia Tech game. Yep to have a fourth quarter in doubt for Boise State. It's been a long time since they've played a game where everything was on the line late in a game. 586 minutes of being with the lead, but being challenged here, being tested late by number 19, Nevada. Moore. Incomplete. He threw a strike to Austin Pettis. But it falls incomplete. This Nevada defense has become more aggressive 
taking more chances and it all started when Dante Moog started getting pressure on Moore. More aggressive play in the secondary now. Watch how close and tight the coverage is now. You didn't get this in the first half. There is Moog. All that speed he brings after Kellen Moore. Third and one. Martin on the pitch. Does not even come close. James Michael Johnson and the rest of that Nevada defense doing their job well. Watch the linebackers straight. They stay clean. Nobody gets to them. No lineman is able to get to them. They're free. They can come make the play. That is good football. You keep your linebackers clean. Boise's going for it. Fourth and two. Or will he pooch punt? He does just that, Kellen Moore. And it takes a favorable bounce for the Broncos. So now the stage is set for Colin Kaepernick. Got a good one here and tomorrow night it should be a good one on Saturday Night Football on ABC. Oklahoma Oklahoma State. You know that offense with Landry Jones, Ryan Broyles, and of course Justin Blackman. Rod, I think this guy is oh, yeah. one of the best players in college football. Yeah, he's something. I hope Landry Jones is playing. I know he was listed as probable after having a, a head injury. Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines. That's 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. Vitawa now. Here goes Vitawa. Big gainer for the Wolfpack. Out to the 32-yard line. Well, we talked about keeping linebackers clean. This time, the linebackers are not clean for Boise State. They get tied up by Virgil Green, 85. That tight end we talked about who makes great blocks got in there and disrupted everything. Virgil Green took out two defenders. Man. Right up the middle again. Let's go down to the field to Dave. After that last Nevada possession, defensive back coach Marcel Yates had the group up together talking to the guys going, hey, missed tackles, PIs, that is not who we are. We have to play with great eyes and finish plays. They do indeed. And Courtney Randall. Getting some work now. There is a big difference in having to focus and concentrate for 40 plays as opposed to 70 plays. Right, Tower and Colin Kaepernick, you see they are the greatest running combo now in college football history. Overtaking the Pony Express from SMU. And he picks up the first down. So Dickerson and Craig James, number two all time now to Kaepernick and Tawa. Right now, Kaepernick and Tawa are getting it done by Tawa inside. Kaepernick, they still haven't been able to get him outside, but the reverse was a nice substitute, and it opened up things inside again. And the downfield throwing to Rashard Matthews. Here he goes now, Kaepernick. Slides down to the 49-yard line. That clock continues to count down. A competitive fourth quarter for Boise Rod. They are not conditioned to this. It's been a long time. It's been a long time, and like I said, when you're trying to focus for 40 plays, that's a lot different than 65 or 70 plays. Game's usually over by mid-third quarter. But not tonight. Kellen Moore's been pulled in third quarters. Can wear that baseball cap a lot. There's Randall and Courtney Randall. Bulldozes ahead for another Nevada first down.
Randall again. Ball comes loose. Nevada appears to have recovered. I believe Virgil Green, the tight end, was trailing that play. That's the second time tonight that a Nevada receiver has been in the right place at the right time if indeed he has the ball in the bottom of that pile. And Virgil Green has had a great night. He, he's really a tremendous blocker. And he and is next up field, the other tight end who actually comes up with it. Yeah, you're right. Sudfield, 44. Both of the tight ends were in on that ball. Sudfield and Green, and it was Sudfield who comes up with it. So a second and three. Kaepernick to the outside. Colin Kaepernick gets free for a first down, and Nevada is marching. Good block that time by Mike Ball. Here's the guy. That's the guy that they want to use as the lead blocker. That's Virgil Green. He gets out there and seals off the inside and let Kaepernick get outside. That is what they use him for to spring Kaepernick. By Tawa. And Tawa to the 16-yard line. Now, this is the Nevada offense that we've seen all year long. Remember, this is an offense that had 844 yards in a game a few weeks ago. They averaged 537. Third in the country. Great running attack. Uh, and they've done this on the ground. Kaepernick has not really had to throw up this drive other than a screen pass. Kaepernick keeps it. He's taken down at the 10 yard line. And that's the adjustment to get him to the edge. They're using Green as a lead blocker to block the guy who would be responsible for Kaepernick on that option. And Green has done a great job of it. Now you've got the full effect of Colin Kaepernick. All 10 plays on this drive have been rushes. Third and one. First down, Nevada. And it'll be first and goal. The clock continues to run down. The BCS hopes for Boise. Trying to stay alive. Rose Bowl contention. Trying to move up the rankings. Trying to stay alive and in position for BCS title hopes. But this Nevada team, this is their moment. Gets it to Mike Ball. And Ball is forced out by Winston Venable. Well, they don't particularly like to throw the ball down here. They like to go with more option with two bats and get to their triple option down here. And it looks like that's the formation they're going to use. They're going to go with two tight ends and two, full, two bats. And that usually means more option, more outside option down here for Nevada. Second and goal. Towers stacked up. Yeah, see, now, now they've got some difficulty because they're, they don't have enough room to run their passing attack that they like. And Colin Kaepernick has a strong arm, but he's not a touch passer in this red zone area. So I don't expect him to throw the ball unless they throw a fade. I'm thinking more option again and maybe with the pitch involved this time. We'll see if that's the direction they go here. It'll be third and goal. Looking to take the lead against the fourth ranked team in the country. Kaepernick off the fingertips. He was trying to get it to Mike Ball coming out of the backfield. Yeah, yeah, they came with the option look and the option pitch look, but then just wound up throwing it instead of the pitch aspect of it. And they had it out there, and their Kaepernicks are watching, and they knew. Teresa and Rick knew that they had a shot there. So on comes Anthony Martinez. Remember, the wrap on him, he kicks a low blow. Ball had one blocked earlier. This from 23.
24 24. They have come all the way back. Martinez ties it. ESPN's College Football Primetime. Brought you by Dr. Pepper. There's nothing like a pepper. And Allstate. Dollar for dollar, nobody protects you like Allstate. Are you in good hands? Reno is rocking. Joe Tessitore, Rod Gilmore, and David Diaz Infante with you. Number four and number 19 tied up 24 24. Boise's 24 game win streak on the line, as are BCS Bowl implications. The Rose Bowl trying to keep alive title hopes. It all comes down to this. They're chasing Oregon and Auburn, and TCU is looking to stay in the hunt. Titus Young from the goal line. And Young is pushed back at the 20. Well, you've heard of Black Friday, Cyber Monday. This Saturday, November 27th, marks the first small business Saturday. If you find yourself out tomorrow, make it a point. Support your local small businesses. To learn more, you can log on to Facebook.com slash Small Business Saturday. Wolfstan, a popular small business here at the University of Nevada in Reno. And then the fans would like to be celebrating a, a place like that later tonight. But Kellen Moore will have something to say about it. Set it up to Martin. Doug Martin. Look at Doug Martin go. Puts on a move. And Martin still on his feet. Doug Martin, could he? Yes! Was that a Rose Bowl run? What a play by Doug Martin, 79 yards. It was a screen pass in response to all the pressure, and look how many guys he makes miss tackles. Three guys had shots. And instead of running over them, he juked around them. Kellen Moore. He can smile now. Boise by a touchdown. Back to the screen pass that just put Boise State on the board. That's Martin out there. That's where it comes from. Watch all the pressure that comes up and how his blockers get out in front. Now he's got some help there and some help there. And you're going to see poor angles from the secondary. The safeties have a chance to make the play here. They do not. They have bad angles. They stop their feet. Martin jukes them. And then it's a 79-yard run to the end zone. Spectacular play by Doug Martin. He has 233 yards from scrimmage, three touchdowns on the night, and that after Nevada had roared back to tie this game. The lead Wooten. And Wooten is upended by Jerron Johnson. You know, Tess, when the game's been on the line and when Boise State's been behind, Kellen Moore has been really, really good. Of course, he had that great two-minute drill against Virginia Tech. When trailing or tied this season, he's been 49 of 66 with three touchdowns and only one pick. So under pressure, he's pretty calm and cool. Touchdown passes tonight. No picks. And now Colin Kaepernick's turn. That pistol offense. Just four yards back from center. By Tower. 
by Tower with a gain of three. Well, the last couple of possessions, they've been able to get to the edge with Colin Kaepernick and also by using Matthews on the reverse. So they've been able to get outside, which has opened up some things inside. So I don't think they, can ha they have to go away from using Kaepernick. They have now found ways to get him involved running. Looking to pass here. Going downfield, looking for Matthews, and he overthrows his speedy receiver. Turn things over to the seniors who have delivered so much by Tower. Tonight, 100 yards and a touchdown, and Colin Kaepernick. Well, these two young men have combined to become the dynamic duel of rushing and career yardage. Can they, on senior night, knock off Boise State? This is their opportunity. Play they clock was knocked. running down. They have never beaten Boise State. They have a whack title on the line. Can they deliver? so much on the line the nation's longest win streak Boise 24 games 35 straight regular season games but that mighty mark being tested here tonight it's impressive what Nevada did to get back into this game and then Doug Martin that's what championship teams do they well, answer they yeah. respond and that's what Boise just did moments ago, Rob. And it's been that kind of day. It's been a playoff day. You saw Cam Newton and Auburn come back and respond to stay alive in their chase for the BCS. You saw Oregon, you know, come back in the second half of their ball game. And now you're seeing number four fight back after Nevada came back and tied this ball game up. It's a playoff day. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a great way to really put it. Is. I suppose today is as close to a playoff as this sport can produce. All these games, including the top teams in the country and now can Boise pass their test the other two did Kaepernick look at the time he has here on third and six and he gets it complete for the first down as Virgil Green secured the ball uh, we've seen Virgil Green do some great blocking and now he's coming up with catch with catches plenty of time for Kaepernick I thought he would take off but he is thinking about the easier play now and getting his guys involved. And now Vitala shakes loose. And Tawa with a nine-yard run. Yeah, I really think it's been such a long time for, for this defense to have to play inspired fourth quarter football. They may be a little gassed. And this is the time in most games when the reserves are in, when Boise's usually up by multiple yep. touchdowns and coasting for another win but the 19th ranked team here at home on senior night they are inspired second and one towel he's going to be short of that line to make as daryl Akery, the middle linebacker came around to track him really good speed that time by the defense Akery, iloka chasing that down from inside out. And remember Byron Hout, their fine linebacker, is out for the remainder of the year with a broken foot, so Akery stepping up in a spot like this. Third and one now. Tower. First down, Nevada. That clock will count down. Vitala has put together a fine night, 116 yards, 25th career 100-yard game. The NCAA's active leader in 100 yard rushing games. You know, they have a shot they can take. When they have Green in that wing position, they can get him down the field. Kaepernick tries to avoid the pressure. And he'll just throw this ball away as Ryan Winterswike, the Broncos defensive end, was trying to get to Kaepernick. Very smart play. He knew he had nothing to the left side. The play was to the right side. That's where he wanted to go deep. But once he got flushed out of the pocket, he knew the right play was just to get rid of the football. 
Chris Winterstreich. Senior from California has had an outstanding career. Just over two minutes to try to defend this seven point lead and keep Boise's BCS hopes alive. A lot of heavy breathing out there. Second and ten. Here's Ball setting up the screen. Mike Ball. Ball is free. And Mike Ball has it down to the 30 yard line. A 22 yard screen to the reserve running back. He's explosive. He is the guy they look to for speed out of the backfield. And they had that set up perfectly to the right side. He slipped out. Got one good block and just full steam ahead. Kaepernick patiently taking his time to set things up. Fresh set of downs. By tower. Blockers in front. Cuts back. Just a gain of about two and a half. Chase Baker and J.C. Percy trying to find Vitawa. Monday Night Football 49ers Cardinals. 8.30 Eastern. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern with Monday Night Countdown. Served by Applebee's. Boise State just changed their entire defensive line. They were gassed. Matthews to that corner. And right on that pylon of that first down line. And a first down for Nevada inside the 20. Well, he's working against Thompson, who was laying way, way off, way too far in that part of the field to be laying that far off. Easy outtake there. Just over a minute to go, a minute 16. Nevada looking for that touchdown to tie up this game. By Tawa, straight up the middle. They have a great sense of themselves, don't they, Rob? They know what they're all about. Yes, yes, they do. And the game plan is straightforward. By Tawa inside, take the out route when they give it to you with the man coverage, and then try and find a way to get Kaepernick or someone else to the edge when you can. And Courtney Randall comes in as a featured back. Randall gets the call. Courtney Randall, another first down. Clock stops with 42 seconds to play. It'll be first and goal. Chris Peterson. All that talk of the BCS. Title game hopes. Rose Bowl berth. Could Nevada tie this game? Put the pressure on Boise. Send it to overtime. That clock, clock is running. First and goal. I don't like the way they managed that time. Not at all. A lot of time went by. Remember, when it stopped wow. at 42 seconds, and now at 21, and you can see the disgust in the face of the Hall of Fame coach. This changes everything. I mean, now you've got no timeouts. Now you have to be really cautious about what you do. Because if you run the ball inside and you can't get back up, you can't get another another shot at it. Undoubtedly. You have Undoubtedly. issues now. Now you have to think about throwing the football because you used a timeout and you burned about 20 seconds you didn't have to burn. They were so committed to that running game and it brought them right down the field. But then the mismanagement yep. there in the last sequence and burning that timeout. That is absolutely critical. Boise State with the BCS Bowl berth on the line. They are trying to stay in contention with Auburn and Oregon for the national championship. Trying to jump ahead of TCU this weekend to be in the prime position to go to the Rose Bowl if they do not make it to the national championship game. And the folks in Fort Worth, great interest in this. Kaepernick to pass. Matthews unable to connect. The coverage came from Brandon Thompson. That leaves 17 seconds. Well, and you know that as a defensive back now, you know they have to throw, and you want your eyes on the quarterback. 
And you see Thompson get his eyes back around there quickly. Now everyone on that defense understands it's about throwing the football. Nevada cannot take the risk that if they run, they don't get into the end zone and they don't get another playoff. No timeouts, 17 seconds. Play clock under 10. Matthews to the near side, split wide for Kaepernick. Play clock at two. It's been Matthews, and it's been that out route. That ball comes out quickly. Thompson far off in coverage. Way too much room. Kaepernick's parents, Rick and Teresa, watching. They get it. They're enthused. Chris Peterson is not. All week long, they've talked about this. Saying it's the biggest sporting event in Reno since the heavyweight champion Jack Johnson beat Jim Jeffries in 1910. The biggest game in the history of Nevada football. Their best team that they've had in this era of modern college football. Ranked 19th with a high powered offense and going up against Boise, who have been the kings of the WAC. A year ago, Titus Young returned one against Nevada. We'll be kicking off here with 13 seconds to go. And they'll keep it on the ground. Young will have his chance. And he's forced out. At about the 37 yard line with nine seconds to play. Well, you would assume that Kellen Moore will take a shot at trying to pick up some pretty good yards with one play. They have a timeout, so they can actually use the field and see if they get something out of it. Now, Kyle Brotsman has a career long of 52 yards. Steps up, airs it out, looking for Titus Young. Did he catch it? Diving catch with one second to go. Unbelievable. He's Superman and Velcroed it. How in the world did he pull that off? Kellen Moore, his own miracle. Titus Young answers the prayer. We talked about his arm strength. He's a better thrower than last year. He gives Young a chance. And Young just shows flat out speed and comes up with it. It is a good catch. The ball did not hit the ground. How did they get it all done with a second left? Nine seconds on the snap. One second when he completes the diving catch. And a timeout called to try to set up the game-winning field goal. Well, and now Kyle Brott's been a former walk-on, a fourth-year starter who has had a record-breaking career, will come on to try to win this game. Tess, in this situation, no one, no one can get behind you. If you have to line up 30 yards deep, no one can get behind you. 
You just can't let anyone get behind you, even if you don't stand back 30 yards. Here's Brosman. The officials are going to take a look at Titus Young's ultimate highlight. The WAC replay official is Ken Lushido, and here's what he will be viewing. Well, see, to me, the catch isn't an issue. He caught that ball and rolled over to show the ball without it hitting. I thought the only issue might be the clock. Clock stopped with a second to go. There's the catch. Turns over. The ball never gets to the ground. His elbow and body are on the ground. That is truly a magnificent play by Kellen Moore and Titus Young. And the body control to turn his body to make sure that the ball did not come in contact with the ground. Goes down with two seconds remaining. Clock operator busy set the game clock to two seconds. So he even saved an extra second. <laughs> Chris Peterson, yeah, yeah, I knew we have to put a second back on. Titus Young was fully extended, both feet off the ground, and Kellen Moore, what have they said about Kellen Moore all year long? The biggest can't improvement Can't throw game. the deep ball. That's what they said last year. That's right. And that was the biggest jump this year. But again, you go back to that catch, and that body control, making sure that Titus Young turned his body so the ball never came close to having contact with the ground was all the difference and that catch being clearly a legal catch. And now it comes down to the right foot of Kyle Brotsman. Uh, and Chris oh, has to be sick. How can somebody with nine seconds to go get behind your secondary? <laughs> Nation's active scoring leader. Black special team player of the week, a senior. Now it's time for Brotsman to deliver. This from 26. was ready to raise the arm. They were celebrating on the Broncos sideline. But Chris Holt gets the confirmation. What a reprieve for Nevada. We will have overtime when we return. Joe Tessitore, Rod Gilmore, and David Diaz. And okay, fellas, we'll now begin extra periods. Borsi, you're going to call a talk. What's your call going to be? Heads. Okay. There's heads, there's tails. Here we go. It's tails. Tails it is. You want to be on defense. You want to be on defense first? You want to go in that, go in that direction? All right. Uh, so just stay right here. We'll go that way. First and ten. So you heard the coin flip there as Nevada has the opportunity to know what they will need to accomplish in overtime. But how we have reached this point is amazing. Well, just think about the emotional swing over the last couple of minutes. You're tied. You're down. You come up with a great big catch, and now you're going to win the game with the game-winning kick. You're set up for just a nice, easy field goal. Right? Game win. But Brotsman misses the 26-yarder. 
Boy, those shorter uprights. You know, most of the major universities have the longer uprights, but that is so tough to tell. But just slid out to the side on Kyle Plotzman, who is so greatly accomplished. And perhaps he will get another chance. But as it stands now, this stadium has come alive. Boise goes to offense first. Moore, good looking fake. And he's incomplete. All right, so let's set the table for overtime here, Rob. Well, you know the rules. Coin toss, a choice of offense, defense. Everybody wants to be on defense first so that you know what the other team has done. You know what you have to do. You get one possession from the 25-yard line. You keep going back and forth. Game clock doesn't matter. You must go for two, starting with the third overtime. Prior to that incompletion, Moore's last two passes was the 79-yard screen pass touchdown and that miraculous 53-yard of the young. Now second and ten. Looking to set up the screen, but being pursued. Had to wait for it. Now able to get it, but smashed down was Doug Martin by Kevin Grimes. But it is the pressure from Nevada that is disrupting Boise State's passing attack. Moak and company are disrupting the rhythm and timing. Moore wanted to go to Pettis to the right side, but the pressure forced him to the left and he couldn't come back to Pettis. Third and nine. Avery for a first down for Boise. Well, they mixed him up again. They caught them with the blitz coming inside, and instead of Avery staying inside to help, he snuck out to the right side. 16 yards on third and nine. And it'll be a first and goal here. Chris Peterson. Pressure pack situations. His team has not seen much of this. Play action. Moore. Back in the end zone, but Titus Young could not get a grasp of it. Uh, he surveyed the field. His first choice was Kyle uh, Efa. He wanted him in the middle of the field, but had to come off of that. And Pettis wasn't open. And then he finally goes back to his third option, Titus Young, in the back of the end zone. Pettis is his preferred guy down here. Martin wrapped up in the backfield. Ryan Colson, the first to get on top of him. Well, you know, the interesting thing is they took Young out and they took Pettis out and signaled the running play. They did. Potter was in at receiver. You know, their favorite play down here is to use Pettis and to use him on a slant to get that big body inside and give him a chance. Martin and Avery both in on third and goal from the 12. Incomplete. Young got his hands up, and the ball bounced into the end zone. So now, Kyle Brotsman has to return to the field to kick again. Well, you see him come back again, trying to get it over to Young. No, he was... He's uh, throwing at the coverage. Pettis was the guy he wanted. Marlon Johnson, great job inside. But Pettis, again, was doubled to the right side. This from 29. This is turning into a disaster for Brotsman. He misses from 26 what could have been the game winner in regulation. And now, in the first overtime, 
He misses from 29, and Nevada will have a chance to pull the upset. Taz, both of these kicks have been straight on. No angle. And he pushed the one in regulation, and he hooked this one. Chris Hall. Could be the signature moment for this program. By Tawa to the 21. Ellen Moore's reaction with the missed kick. Could these BCS dreams come crash down here in Reno? It only takes a field goal for Nevada. Any score, and they win. A loss would drop Boise State out of contention for the national championship and out of the Rose Bowl race. TCU would stand alone as the highest non-AQ. Kaepernick. And that is incomplete. So it'll make for a third and six. So much on the line here. Remember, the day started with Alabama way out in front of Auburn and people around the world of Boise State were thinking, could it be that we could be playing for a spot in the national title game? And then Oregon does their thing, the Auburn comeback. And they're thinking, okay, still alive with the hope, still alive for the Rose Bowl. And then the Nevada comeback after trailing 17 zip. Kaepernick will have to be smart, not take chances. They are already in position to attempt a field goal. Keep it on the ground with Tawa. He muscles ahead inside the 20. So it is now the time for the red shirt freshman, the five foot six Anthony Martinez, who joined the program as a walk on and now can give them their biggest win. This attempt from 34. I expect a timeout from Chris Peterson. Instead, it is Martinez with the win. Nevada has done it. Just the second loss in the college career of Kellen Moore. Number four upset tonight in Reno. An amazing comeback by the Wolfpack. Well, Tess, we talked about the second half. Uh, Boise State had not been challenged in months in the second half of a ball game. And once Colin Kaepernick scored that 18-yard scramble for a touchdown, it was a game in the second half, and Boise State was challenged into the fourth quarter. And they did not make the plays. Nevada made the plays in the fourth quarter. Anthony Martinez. The moment of truth, and he delivers. And with that ball sailing into the cold, thin air of the high Sierras, Chris Alt 
the Hall of Famer wanted this so much. And for the other side, BCS hopes go into that thin air. I am surprised that Boise State did not use a timeout to freeze Martinez before the kick. Kellen Moore has had such a wonderful season and put his team in position with one of the great highlights you will see the Titus Young diving catch. But Kyle Bronsman missing a 26 yard field goal at the end of regulation and then missing a 29 yard field goal in overtime that opened the door for Nevada. Let's go down to the field to Dave Diaz Infante. Dave? Well, Coach, I'll tell us the feeling that's going through your team right now and yourself after finally getting over the hump and defeating Boise State and clinching part of the WAC title. David, it's, 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 it's just a thrill, you know, and right now you, you really, I'm, you're just trying to enjoy everything. I'm looking at those kids out in that field. Couldn't be prouder of them and the coaching staff to come back like we, I mean, this is a great thrill. Coach, you talked about your defense having to make some stops. They're the ones that really got momentum going for you guys in the second half. How proud of you of their effort? Well, I'm really proud of our defense, and you're right. They got us back into it. Then the offense caught going. We warmed down a little bit. That offense was really good, David, that second half. Coach, what was going through your mind at the end of the game with all the things that transpired, the missed field goals, the big play at the end by Boise State, the gamut of emotions that went through your heart? We're a team of destiny. It's going to happen now. When he missed that field goal, I said, this is it. We got it now, guys. Let's go. Well, Coach, destiny was on your side tonight. Congratulations. One of the biggest wins in the history of your program. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. They storm the field here at Mackey. Biggest game that this stadium has ever hosted. The first time two ranked teams had ever met here. At number four, Boise was the highest ranked team to ever come to Nevada. An amazing Friday of college football. From the Auburn comeback to Oregon exploding to this ultimate classic soap opera thriller here in Reno, Rod. It was an incredible playoff day, and you see the range of emotions you get with everything on the line. You had number one and number two and number four playing, number three watching, and everything coming down to tonight, a play here, a kick there, and now Boise State is off the radar for the national championship. Everybody holds serve. We get an Oregon-Auburn national title game. TCU could be smelling roses. Mighty Boise has fallen. And this Wolfpack team is for real. 34-31 overtime win. Anthony Martinez sends it home. Coming up next will be Sports Center. Ellen Moore, the disappointment. For Rod Gilmore and Dave Diaz Infante, I'm Joe Tessitore. Thanks for being with us here in Reno. Enjoy the rest of your night, including Sports Center, right now. Hey, hey, hey,